Well, I wasn't expecting October to start with me winning a spooky mansion, but life is full of surprises. I knew all those world records I set in Guinness O'Ripley's Extreme Arcade of World Records would amount to something. Better check this out. Huh, nice place. Oh hey, someone left the computer on. Funny, I didn't think anyone was here recently. Let's see what they have open. Just gonna close this notepad here. Oh, it's a Flash game. The people who gave me this house must want me to review it. Well, I'm not one to turn down seasonal game reviews, so here we go. In 2014, a big crossover game called Nickelodeon Mystery Mansion came out on Nick.com. It drew inspiration from Luigi's Mansion, so of course it caught my attention. That was the first Mario game I ever owned. Trust me, it's taking me a lot of restraint to not name this video Lucy's Mansion. Heh, <laughs> Lucigi. But in this game, you control Sandy and try to find the other Nicktoons in a haunted house. Seems Halloween-y enough. Let's check it out. Now the main menu is really fascinating because you can see all the windows on the mansion for each of the rooms you'll end up exploring. Good attention to detail. And who threw this pizza here? I doubt the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would waste perfectly good pizza like this. Darn it, Spongebob, I told you not to throw pizzas like that at the customers. But once we start, we see a cutscene of Spongebob, Sandy, Michelangelo, Sanjay, Craig, Badoos, and Sway Sway entering the mansion. What is this? Wow. What a mansion! And fun fact, Spongebob's Halloween costume is Frankenbob from Frankenbob's Quest. He was basically a celebrity on Nick.com who had a mini following of his own. Glad to see they continued to feed this extremely specific fandom. Sandy's also the bride of Frankenstein, which she dressed as in Frankenpatrick too. Spongebob and Sandy shippers probably got a kick out of them wearing these matching outfits. But guess what? The house turns out to be haunted. I can relate. I saw a ghost in my house the other day too. This ghost has a party hat on and candy in its hair. How malicious could it be? But Sandy wastes no time karate chopping it into a second death. Darn, double rest in peace. But everyone else is scared away, so Sandy has to find them. Hey, what's that lump under the carpet? Come on, let me stomp on it. Anyway, you have a conveniently placed vacuum device capable of sucking up ghosts. Not sure why a house filled with ghosts would just have that lying around. It's like if a vampire stocked its house with garlic and crosses. But as you can see, we have ghostly locks on each door and a green fire in the fireplace. Ah, so that's what they use to cook green eggs and ham. But as we move deeper into the mansion, we can see just how big it is. We have seven rooms for each floor, all themed after the represented shows. I mean, the Nicktoons were coming here to party, so maybe they set it up like this. Let's start on the SpongeBob floor with these cool pineapple doors. It's probably very juicy in there. But once we enter the first room, we're thrown into the general format. The rooms are creatively designed to match the shows, but they still keep the spooky mansion feel. Now you go around to interact with objects that are shaking. Hey, why's that chair so sad? Feels like people are just sitting on it all the time. But pressing spacebar on the right object will cause a ghost to come out. Then you use your device to suck it up. The arrow behind you will tell you what direction to move in to keep draining the health of the ghost until you bring it in. Hey, I told you this was inspired by Luigi's Mansion. You can also find candy, which fills a counter of its own. But be careful. When you search randomly, you might end up unleashing spiders instead. They hurt you if you touch them or suck them up. Come on, in what world does a spider beat a vacuum cleaner? Must be from Australia. And look at all these portraits of SpongeBob's skeleton. Sometimes you just need to look inside yourself. But once you reach the end, you're faced with a boss. In this case, it's Lord Poltergeist. Hey, he must be the one who spilled the pizza out front. It's all SpongeBob's fault. So bosses are a little more challenging than the usual spirit. If you hit the wrong arrow key, they throw spiders at you. Seems like a good means of defense. Forget earth, fire, water, or air bending. I want to be a spider bender. And while you get the hang of these eventually, the first one might be a bit of a struggle. Look, I died. Now Sandy's frozen in stone. Didn't know Medusa was in the house. We'll go to the second floor instead. This one has a Sanjay and Craig theme. These look like the coziest rooms with refrigerators and arcade machines. And look at all those chickens. It's no wonder the first boss is the Chicken Wing King. But you'll find the bosses are actually surprisingly easy when you know what to do. And sometimes they dispense candy. If your counter reaches 100, you speed up and drain a ghost's health much faster. But you do have to be careful. If you aren't in a position where you can catch a ghost, you might end up wasting it if you don't carefully control your candy consumption. You have to let yourself reach 100 at just the right moment if you want to make it count. See, we have a Halloween game that teaches us about moderation when it comes to eating candy. But there are still six bosses to get through after you beat the first one, so you have to keep moving. Ugh, spiders in the microwave. Don't you just hate that? Alright, it's time to make some popcorn. 
Oh, it's the spiders. But each boss is a character from each show, such as evil Miss Sparkles here. Hey, what happened? Hello? I captured her so hard I crashed the whole game. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, this is where modern technology really kicks us in the behind. If you try to play this game today, grabbing candy is a serious risk. Sometimes, when you try to capture a ghost with 100 candies, the game will just outright freeze. Then you have to restart. Thankfully, most places you can play this will save your progress. I guess it could be a whole new challenge. What's meant to help you could just as easily end up killing you. What a great analogy for the dangers of eating too much candy. This game is unintentionally deep. But now you really have incentive to avoid the candy. It doesn't matter too much because it only helps just a tiny bit. Just have a little patience and you'll catch the ghosts eventually. Though it's really annoying when they break away from you because they dash across the room and almost always hit you. And to be honest, the controls are a little hard for me to navigate. Maybe I'm just stupid, but the ghosts are supposed to break free if you hit the wrong arrow key, but I kept having ghosts break loose regardless of which key I hit. Even the bosses, which are only meant to throw spiders at you if you hit the wrong key. I didn't fully understand the controls when playing, but I still managed to catch every ghost, so it didn't really matter anyway. So eventually, you reach the Sanjay and Craig boss. The final bosses aren't any harder than your usual ones, so just defeat them and turn them back to normal. This is how you find out that all your friends have been turned into ghosts. That is, if you couldn't tell by the previous bosses. But now you can actually play as Sanjay and Craig. You can head to the foyer from most floors and even visit this gallery that shows you portraits of every ghost you defeated. Wow, there sure are a lot. So yeah, get ready for a very, very long game. It can take about 10 minutes to clear two stages. This isn't really a simple flash game you can play after finishing your homework on a school night. During the 2010s, Nickelodeon was prioritizing really big games rather than the much smaller ones we usually got in the 2000s. Maybe they saw the success of Lava King and ran with it. These games were usually updated over time with later stages being added. So the game is much bigger today than it would have been if you played it on its first release. Consequently, you do just kind of do the same thing over and over and over again. The difficulty doesn't really change from ghost to ghost, and the format stays the same with only changes to the background being made. You know what I think this game could have benefited from? A shop. Or some kind of upgrade system. The candy could have been a currency that you could use to upgrade your health or vacuum or even change your costumes. That way, the ghosts could have been made harder and you'd have more incentive to grab candy. There would also be a good payoff to searching every room thoroughly. I don't know, it was just a thought I had while playing this. Let's go find Spongebob. It's kind of interesting that the next boss is the Flying Dutchman. You'd expect him to come out much later on. But he's followed by Warlock Gary Lynn. Missed the chance to call him Scary Gary. <laughs> Dead Squid Tentacles. Was that really the best name they could come up with? Just Dead Squidward? But eventually, you reach Spongebob and you fight him and then, hey, where'd he go? Um? Wasn't I supposed to unlock him? Uh... Yeah, that's a glitch. A very unfortunate glitch in a few modern renditions of this game. But I don't know, maybe it's on my end. Maybe my version of the game is just cursed. Oh, the power went out. Better check the circuit breaker. Oh, it's the spiders. There we go. Hey, what's this? Once she possesses you, your body and mind will change at the stroke of midnight. Don't look at the screen. Huh. I wonder who this bee person could have been writing to. Oh well, back to the game. I guess fixing the power fixed some of the bugs. So now that we've unlocked Spongebob, let's go find the breadwinners. The speakers are working, so listen to the really fitting music. Gosh, playing as Frankenbob is bringing back some unpleasant memories. 
Why did you make that game so hard, Sarbakin? Why? I also have to mention that whenever you meet a boss, Tokata and Fugue in D minor plays. <laughs> Wouldn't be Halloween without it. But now that we're in the breadwinners to hey, why are we unlocking doors out of sequence? That's gonna be confusing. Nah, I think it's just a glitch. Oh well. Gets us to the end quicker. Or not. Where are Butt Juice and Swaggity Swoo? I defeated them, didn't I? Oh well, let's head to the TMNT floor. This one's in the basement, which is cool because it utilizes the sewer environment. Ugh, are you kidding me? These glitches are getting out of hand. But yeah, the TMNT zone is probably the coolest. It's fun to fight through all the different characters, too. Including this horrible amalgamation of the turtles. And there's no Mikey. Great. Well, unfortunately, I haven't been able to unlock them, but thanks to an official YouTube video on Nickelodeon's channel, we can see what their gameplay looks like. Check it out! Whoa! But actually, this game has an ending. After you unlock everyone, the party ghost returns, saying she turned everyone into party ghosts so they could enjoy the party. Heh, <laughs> Halloween part. But they decide they don't need to be ghosts in order to party, and they all have a good time. Or not. Sandy says they have to leave after only a few minutes, but they promise to come back next year. Kind of a drag of an ending, isn't it? And then that's the end of Nickelodeon Mystery Mansion. Now what can be said about this? The music and animation are good, and the gameplay is interesting. All of the details nicely incorporate elements from each of the shows, and the game makes the most out of them. It's got that Halloween feel to it, too. If you have the time to put into this, it could be worth it. When it properly works, that is. It's really unfortunate that the game has to be so buggy. Things like this can keep those of us in the modern age from enjoying it to its fullest. How fitting for a Halloween game. Nothing is scarier than rapidly advancing technology. But overall, even with its kind of bittersweet ending, I like the game and the story behind it. Though it is kind of silly. Who ever heard of someone being turned into a ghost in a haunted house? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Huh? I don't really feel so... Whoa, what the? What just happened? Ugh, I think I need to go lay down. I didn't feel like myself for a minute there. I felt so... critical. Anyway, I'm gonna spend the night in my new mansion. Happy October, everyone! I hope you look forward to watching me cover even more spooky games. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, which are linked in the description below, and tune in for our next installment. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.